service for project and uh, writing them off. Mm -hmm. could, you, could, you, could you say that a data center is just a bunch of servers where a cloud system within a data center is a piece of the data center with a layer of provisioning and services on top of it? it it's about res resource services. Exactly. And that's the main difference. And I disagree with having a, your own data, of your own equipment, or not your own equipment. That is the flexibility. The, 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 yeah, the, the flexibility to provide services at will and stop them and reuse them and, and move them around that makes the agility for a business interesting and that's different than let's say an old style data center uh, where you, you have people and processes not being capable of giving that flexibility yes you can provide a service within a couple of hours but if you need more resources can you provide that server to move to another data center elsewhere, a public out, bursting for example. Well, that is not a function of a traditional data center. And yes, if you have a private cloud, it is a form of a data center. It is still hardware and software and, and, and as a cables to keep it all together. So that, that's the same. I, I think also there's another aspect to this as well around just general websites. You know, I, I did some work with a, media, a very large media company, international media company. And we looked at their websites in their organization. They had more than 650 websites, all with different webmasters, all in different places in the organization. And what they wanted to do was to consolidate that and down so that they could control the security, the regulatory compliance, etc. And of course, by consolidating that down, putting it into your own data center in a more efficient way. You know, some of those websites were doing millions of transactions. Some of those websites were doing 50 transactions a month. When you looked at the hardware, the 50 server, uh, the 50 user a month uh, transactions were doing, they were still on big hardware, consuming lots of power. So of course you would go and virtualize that, putting those on individual maybe VMware VMs, but then your big production servers doing the millions of transactions you need on the big boxes. And of course the VMware piece is about being able to move those workloads around that will, you know, physical to, to, to virtual, virtual to physical that actually helps you make those efficiencies of scale. Well, I can see the benefits for the larger enterprises. What does it do for SMB companies? Is the cloud also suitable for uh, SMB? It's great for entrepreneurs. It's it absolutely fantastic. has That's different uh, benefits yes. then. Um, I, I, absolutely, yes. You know, you look at an SMB, I mean, we have something like two and a half million paid for mailboxes across uh, the globe that we look after for companies. You can go and buy that for, you know, I don't know the pricing, say five pound a month and the, the web now stuff where we own intellectual property, maybe a, a, a dollar a month. Um, for them to go and put an exchange server to do that would be prohibitively expensive. So there are some, some things to scale. It was interesting, I was doing a presentation to developers in London at a, a conference for an open source company. And one of the people there came to me and said, you know, they're looking at Google, whether they should put all their applications into Google or use the, the, the app stuff. And, and you had to, it, it took me quite a bit of time to try and work out why they would or wouldn't do that. And I think that for different companies, there are different reasons why you might do that. And it's to do with the complexity of your business and what functionality you need. Yeah. Well, do, you, do you see what, what was the reason for SMB companies to, to... I, I think the reason for SMB to, to look at cloud and, and what, uh, once again looking at those utility services is to really get enterprise level um, uh, or enterprise grade uh, software and, and services even though you're a five minute old startup, uh, you, you already have your enterprise level uh, uh, software and services and I think that and for, for a price that is very affordable to SMB as well. Uh, which is, I think, one of the, the beauties of cloud computing because you have, you have this, that scale of economies where, um, for, especially for SMB, it's, it is very uh, tempting to, 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 to put your information into the cloud from, from day one because it, 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 it's definitely going to uh, help them reduce the, uh, the cost and complexity that they might have in their, in their own organization to run their own IT infrastructure. And it's, 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 it's definitely going to help them in, in terms of expansion and all that because it's, it so much reduces complexity, yeah. um, especially for those, those basic services. <coughs> you otherwise have to uh, buy hardware for uh, train people or have, you know, 
is for some reason. Yeah. Otherwise, it's okay. Same benefits apply for voice? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If, if I were to start a company tomorrow, I wouldn't buy a PBX. Okay. <laughs> I would get it from the cloud. Yeah. Because it, it, it scales wonderfully with, with the small uh, organizations. If business uh, is good, uh, and it's very easy to, to uh, get a few extra employees with, with telephony and also with, with email and storage and whatnot. Mm. And if business is slow, you can scale it down again. So that, it's wonderful. Financial people love it. Don't have to go to the bank to buy service. No, great. Just upset. Well, it, it, it all sounds great. Um, I, well, we're already convinced, but you know that. Um, but how come not everybody is, is fully web based? Um, uh, not 100% cloud ready, or um, th there are still, um, um, how do they say, uh, some, some doubts uh, about taking the step into the cloud? The, the, the biggest thing I see is some of the self-interest in some of the big organizations. We're working with some very big system integrators in Holland. And what we see there is they have a traditional data center side, and then they have their business and application side that go and interface with customers. The test dev people on the, on the business side are already using cloud. But when those people go to the data center people and say, I need one server, the data center people say, I'm not interested in that. So there is this conflict between the two sides in the business of the, the data center people saying, I want big, you know, I want my name in lights, as it were, um, and not interested in the small piece. And they're not yet in embracing cloud because they see that as a threat to their job security, etc. What we are seeing, however, is that those big system integrators are looking at how they can become aggregators of cloud. So in other words, they want to eventually be able to go to a customer and say, you could take that application and it would be better suited in cloud. We can do a business transformation case to help you. And we will put you on the right cloud to go and do that. So we are seeing that, that the big guys are starting to look at what is available in the market instead of being, we want one solution fits all. Okay. And do you work with government organizations as well? <coughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you an example. Um, the OpenStack community, which is the open source community, uh, was something set up between NASA and Rackspace originally. People like Dell, Citrix are in there now. Um, there are something like 77 organizations in there. Uh, the NASA component was a company called Anso Labs, who was part of proving their benefit to uh, back to NASA and the government, set up the, their cloud compute product, which is in May West now in the States, and runs a lot of the servers around uh, Homeland Security and lots of other governmental departments. It's probably the biggest cloud system in the world. But do you work with government um, agencies in the Netherlands as well? We do, but we, uh, Rackspace doesn't have a data center in the Netherlands. Yeah, we base that out. I'll, I'll and, and I think that um, uh, we're seeing more and more interest from government agencies, but they have to be very careful over what they can outsource outside their countries. For example, police forces and so on. Uh, are sitting there saying, well, we can't outsource, perhaps. Um, so what we're looking at is how we expand the international footprint around uh, cloud into a lot more countries in Europe, that's for sure. So would you be interested to start maybe a data center in the Netherlands to be able to serve those agencies? Um? The interesting piece, I mean, we, we did an announcement in the US, I think, back in January, which was that uh, Equinix, ourselves, and, Cit and uh, Dell were getting together to go and put up our clouds in Equinix data centers using Dell hardware. So I think that one of the challenges is how do you go into a new country without having all the, the huge costs attached to putting a cloud into a new region? And I think that we will probably see more and more of those uh, partnerships start. I mean, certainly we're having conversations now with very big telcos across Europe about how we can help them build their clouds and manage and support them but effectively they own and run them and create the stickiness for their, their customers and consumers. So I think, you know, certainly, and you're also seeing in the acquisition market at the moment with people like uh, Verizon buying uh, um, uh, the, 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 one of the main Dutch EMC cloud providers. Um, we're seeing the telcos wanting to get into that business because it's almost as though they know they've got to be there, but they don't know what they're going to do once they get there type of thing. And we've seen that before when they were building bright, shiny data centers just before, before the boom bust. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we only have five minutes to go. And I thought since this is a practical uh, session, uh, I would like to conclude with one tip or trick. Uh, uh, I have a really short comment yeah. on, on the sure. on the government. Yeah. 
at uh, many customer sites, also government, they all talk about going into clouds. Uh, they also have all kinds of initiatives to start their data centers, servicing more, uh, let's say, departments within the government. So they, they become a service providers themselves, which before uh, forms kind of private cloud structures. So there's a lot of movement going on. And, and the biggest challenge why we're not already, everybody's in the cloud, is we have to write off data, we have to write off uh, equipment, we have to, let's say, reinvest, and we have to prepare the organization. So a lot of things which are stopping it from, from happening right away. It, it's not the idea, uh, but they all, uh, let's say, embrace the ideas, but it's, it's the legacy. Legacy applications, for example. The cloud is based on virtualized platforms, mostly Intel as a standard, so that you can burst from one provider to another provider. And if you have a legacy application still running on a mainframe, you get stuck. And we say for years the mainframes are dead, and there are also a lot of other legacy applications. It will take some time before.